All right, thanks for uh, jumping on. Obviously, some uh, amazing news that just got came out or just came out in the recruiting world. So great day here uh, in our facility from that standpoint. And another statement about uh, what's going on in this program. Um, going back to last night, a couple things that certainly I wanted to uh, clarify and address one was uh i made a comment about not running pressures and i think that came across as you know we're calling stuff and guys aren't running them that's not necessarily the case where there were like i said times where florida gave us a formation that um, we had to adjust to and whether that meant you know we got out of the pressure or someone else ran it uh, we didn't do a great job of that, you know, throughout the night. But um, my bigger issue, we, we we didn't do a great job of adjusting. Sometimes we did well. We just weren't consistent enough on adjusting to those pressures, or to adjusting to their formations. And then, um, and then, uh, when we did run the pressures, uh, I didn't think our mentality in running the pressure was what it needed to be, if that makes sense, uh, where, you know, when we call a pressure, like, we need to hit it, and we need to go, and it needs to be very evident that we're bringing extra people, and uh, I didn't think we were uh, great at that last night, and ultimately that's on us as coaches, which leads me to the second part. Um, uh, certainly aware that much is being made of some of my comments when I was asked about what I saw uh, on defense, and I gave specific examples uh, anybody that has covered this program and knows me knows that I have always come into those post game press conferences and at press game press conferences after a poor performance and saying you know something along the lines of I didn't do a good enough job coaching and ultimately it's on me and I'm responsible and that has always been the case and last night was no different and my frustrations last night were the fact that we were in position to make those plays and we didn't make them. And ultimately that's on us as coaches for not having our guys, uh, starting with me as the head football coach, not having our guys in, um, uh, in, in not, not, not just in position to make those plays, but getting it done. And that was the frustrating thing because, you know, at the end of the game, offensively and defensively, just technique-wise, we weren't where weren't executing like we needed to. Um, whether it be a pressure on defense on a fourth down, where we uh, lose leverage and should we got a free hitter on the quarterback and he's going to be sacked and the game's going to be over and and we lose leverage. Ultimately, we didn't do a good enough job as coaches uh, of coaching that during the week on that pressure, and that's a pressure that we've run a million times around here. Uh, or uh, you know, we miss a tackle on a pressure uh, on another fourth down that gives them a first down, and we didn't get the tackle. That's on us as coaches because we didn't get it coached up enough during the week, starting with me. And then offensively, played did a lot of really good things yesterday offensively, but you go back to the last three plays before we um, punted the ball back to them. To me, we lost on those three plays because of uh, not mental errors, but just technique. You know, we don't um, first down, we don't ID properly, and we we lose on the backside cutoff. Second down, we run a perimeter play, same one we ran earlier in the game with Leggett, and uh, we we uh, don't finish on the perimeter from a blocking standpoint. And then third down, we give up a sack uh, because we don't play with you know great technique, and ultimately. Uh, we didn't make those plays because we as coaches, starting with me, we didn't do a good enough job. And we did a lot of really good things yesterday. But my frustration, and I told the team, is we just needed to make one more play somewhere on offense, on defense, or on special teams. And we had opportunities in the fourth quarter in all three phases. And if we just make one more play on uh, one of those three phases, we're all sitting here feeling different uh, right now. Uh, today, uh, you know, like I said, four-minute offense, not being able to close the game out was disappointing. I mean, just a crazy deal. I mean, they throw a quick slant and ball deflects off their receiver's hands literally right into the other guy's hands in stride. And, and uh, you know, we just got to be better, starting with me, without a doubt. I mean, there were some great individual efforts yesterday on offense, defense, and special teams. Um Proud of the way a lot of proud of the effort our guys played with, you know. Defensively, we were out there way too many snaps. 
Uh, part of that is we got to get ourselves off the field, obviously, but defensively, you know, Jalen Kilgore played 70 plays, Nick Eman Warry played 80, and then uh, Sell, OD, and DQ played 86 plays. And the majority of the time, they were out there in man to man coverage, and they made some big time plays in coverage. Um, and and uh, certainly, when you're on an island out there like we were last night, uh, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. And we certainly lost some, but we won our share of, of those too. So let's make sure we don't lose sight of that from a defensive back standpoint. And then, like I told the team today, when we call pressures, that means our DBs are out there on an island by themselves, and those pressures got to get there and get to the quarterback. Um, proud of the offensive line. Thought they played really well and gave us a chance. We are able to get the run game going, uh, opened up the passing game, and uh, a lot to build on from yesterday. But in the end, just not good enough. Uh, Injury-wise, uh, I'll know more later. Uh, Stone Blanton, Mario Anderson, and Vershawn Lee are the three that we're most concerned about right now. All three of those guys had some tests done this afternoon, and I'm just waiting to hear the results back. So I'll have more information for you on Tuesday in regards to those guys. And then looking at it as a staff, guys that we felt like played really well and gave us a great opportunity to win the game. Offensively, Mario Anderson, Vershawn Lee, uh, Trevon Ball played his best game. Spencer Rattler and Xavier Leggett. And defensively, Tonka Hemingway, he was active. He won his one-on-ones, did a really nice job. Stone Blanton, we felt like, was in the right place, played physical, had some nice third-down stops. And then Jalen Kilgore in the secondary as well. Uh, uh, no no coincidence, every week we, we recognize our four uh, student-athletes of the week from an academic standpoint, and Jalen Kilgore was one of them this week. He's a model student-athlete, making all A's. And uh, and uh, playing great on the field too, and then special teams wise, Mitch Jeter. Questions? Hey Shane, it's Dave. I mean, I, you mentioned it last night that the guys in the secondary they're not young. You know, they, they played last year, made some big plays last year. After looking at the film, was there something that you saw a breakdown scheme wise or just technique wise about why they struggled so uh, badly? No, I don't think it's easy because for you guys and for everybody to point at the secondary and and when we're when we're bringing six people or we're bringing seven people, um, you know, uh, we can't cover all day and we got to be able to get there and, and get to the quarterback as well to help those defensive backs out. And certainly, uh, when you play 86 plays like the majority of those guys did, David, there's going to be some losing plays and we gave up way too many explosives last night. But you know, make sure when you guys do your film evaluation, you guys go back and watch some of the one-on-one plays that they did uh, have pass breakups on and, and when they did play with great leverage and technique because they had a whole bunch of those as well. So let's make sure we don't lose sight of those and when we're breaking down our film after the game like you guys do. Uh, but in regards to the negative plays um, that they did give up, some of it is technique whether it's uh you know supposed to not playing inside leverage when you're supposed to be playing inside leverage or outside leverage if you're outside leverage um uh you know it may be a technique at the line of scrimmage when you're in press it it may be a uh you know uh we were in three deep coverage one time and they hit a deep over on us over there towards the uh towards the student section on Florida sideline and and uh we were in three deep and you know corner jumped the kind of the intermediate route when there was a deep route coming over his head just you know things like that as well so all fixable but you know to me the other the biggest thing is we brought pressure last night on over 30 of our snaps and the majority of time we did that and even when we weren't bringing pressure we were playing a lot of man coverage and you know you're gonna you're gonna win your share and you're gonna lose your share and we didn't win enough, and we needed just to make one more, you know, one more play in the secondary or at linebacker or on the D line or anywhere else last night. Hey Shane, it's John. Um, over the course of the season, uh, that that nickel spot seems to be giving y'all a, a good bit of problem. There's there's been a lot of rotation there among starters. I just wonder what what you see in that's been the issue at that position has it been well it's easy for you guys it's easy for you guys to say that the nickel position gave us a lot of problems because you know nick was matched up last night in the slot one-on-one against a really good receiver from florida and he won some plays and you know coming out of the uh coming out of the tennessee game uh you know that nickel position he played nickel in that game and, and he made some pretty good plays in that game as well um so, you know, we certainly got to continue to find ways to 
help those guys out, whether it be, you know, double inning coverage and cer- certainly Mississippi State, you know, that's a game you look back and say that we struggled a little bit in coverage and that was, uh, you know, a different nickel playing that night. And like I talked about after that game, some of those plays that we gave up against Mississippi State, we should have had, you know, some safety help over the top on a lot of those plays as well. But uh, when you're playing nickel, that guy's basically a Sam linebacker, so he's playing coverage. He's asked to do a lot against the run. Uh, with Nick being in there last night, we, we we wanted to be active with him and get him involved in pressures and coverage and run defense, and and uh, we did that. So you know, certainly um, we've played different guys there, and I've got full confidence in DQ and Nick both, or Keenan Nelson, or Kawan Banks, or David Spalding, or whoever else has been able to to get in there. We just gotta gotta coach it better, and and uh, and 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 gotta make more plays for sure. Hey, Shane and Taylor, I wanted to ask about uh, Nick Harbour and, and the big catch he had last night, and, and I think he probably played as much or more than he has uh, in a game this season. What, what have y'all seen from him that, that led yeah, to he, um he had his best week of practice, uh, uh, the off week, and then this past week he was very focused, and um, he earned that with the way that he practiced. And, and you're right, Hale, he played uh, 29 plays last night or yesterday afternoon, uh, played well, you know. We wanted to kind of uh, uh, even out some of those wide receiver reps a little bit, and and get Nick in there more. And uh, he was out there last night specifically when we were in twelve personnel, meaning one running back, two tight ends, and two receivers. He was going to be in that package pretty much every time, and and uh, and uh, did well. You know, played hard. There's a lot to clean up, like everywhere, but he continues to work, and, and that was a big time play he made, and and uh, really happy for him because of how, you know, how hard he's worked, and give Spencer some credit too. You know, Spencer does a great job of lifting him up and instilling confidence in him, and throwing him balls in practice, and and having confidence to throw balls to him in the game as well. Hey Shane, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's okay. Go ahead, Phil. I was just going to ask follow up. Go ahead. No, no. Go, go ahead, ahead, Phil. Go ahead, go ahead Phil. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, just, do, do you foresee Nick playing more and getting more looks in, in the passing game and, and touching the ball and that, that type of thing? Yeah. Uh, Nick Harbour, I'm sorry. Is that who you said? Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and all those guys, I mean, we wanted to – we wanted to get a lot of those guys in there. We wanted to get Tyshawn Russell in there more, you know, last night, and and uh, and and we did. He played eight plays. We want to get him in the game more, um, you know. Uh, uh, Eddie Lewis didn't play last night. We want to continue to see him more, but all those guys, without a doubt, we want to get those guys going. But especially Nick, because he uh, continues to gain confidence and. And uh, and does a nice job for us. But like all of our players, it's going to be you know go back to practice and how they perform in practice. Hey Shane, it's Phil Cornblue. Uh How did uh, Fugar handle the right tackle in your eyes out there when he went in? And also, can you kind of go into depth about the off week practices and how you and uh, Coach Tinsley uh, worked in revamping the offensive line? Some of the thought process that went into that and. And it certainly looked like they did their job pretty well last night, at least in the running game. Yeah, in regards to Sydney, I think he was, um, you know, he was solid. Um, he came in, obviously, when Vershawn got hurt. And, and um, you know, he'll be the first to tell you there's a lot to clean up. You know, run game-wise, I thought he was, he was uh, uh, you know, good. He got in there, I think it was 38 plays is what he played, Phil. Um, you know, Protection wise, probably could have been a little bit better from a pass protection standpoint uh, when he, with him, and we'll get that cleaned up. But he was uh, he was solid. You know, he's a guy that continues to work and continues to get better, and and uh, gave us a chance when he came in there. As far as the moves, it was really you know something we had talked about moving Vershawn to tackle a couple of weeks ago, but it was one of those you know do you want to make that change because that's pretty radical to move your starting center to right tackle, um, and we said you know let's just keep trying to get these guys a little bit better and see what see how if we can evolve and then certainly coming out of the Tennessee game that didn't happen and felt like we needed to do something so really it was. Uh, Honestly, we were watching one on we we did one on ones like we always do O line versus D line, and we had the whole team kind of come together to watch it. And during that period, you know, Trey Jones had some really uh, good one on one blocks, 
and uh, you know we as coaches just saw him and Trey's played football here before and and uh, we had confidence in him but we just felt like getting him in there gives you you know a little bit more physicality and a little bit more size and he and Tro at guard they move people and uh, when they pull they uh, they dent people when they pull and it allowed us we ran a you know, a little bit more gap scheme last night against Florida than we had all year, and that was because of the way those guards continue to evolve. And and then again, we've got confidence in all those guys. We need to continue to get them all better. We need to get Jackson Hughes healthy. We need to get Case and Henry healthy, and uh, you know, hopefully Vershawn will be okay, and and we can continue to you know solidify that those five guys. Shane, Dave, again. I mean, you've seen a lot of football, and injuries happen, but is it just how how strange is it they all keep happening to the same position, being on the offensive line? Very. Um, I wish I had an answer for you, Dave, but I don't. It's uh, it's frustrating. It's you know, it's it's nothing you can point your finger at. I mean, it's just it's um, you know, just it's uh, something we got to overcome. And uh, you know, certainly hope we don't have anything else. But when you have that many at one position. And it's all multiple injuries. I've been a part of things where you, you know, you have a rash of hamstrings or you have a rash of shoulders or whatever it might be. You know, we've obviously had knee injuries. It's been the primary thing, but you know, we've had a little bit of everything. Jakai had a shoulder, and and uh, um, you know, we just got to got to overcome it. Hey, Shane, it's Andrew. I wanted to ask you about Xavier McLeod. Notice that he had a real uptick in the volume of snaps that he got against the Florida Gators. What have you in the defensive coaching staff seen from him in practice that led to that uh, on Saturday? Just uh, consistency. Um, uh, like all of our guys, you know, practice well. Uh, you're going you're gonna to get opportunities. Don't practice well, you're not. And he's been more consistent and and um, you know, had a good week of practice. Felt like it was his best week, and he got in there and and um, and played and, and did some good things. And we want to continue to be able to get him in there and uh, and get him going. Hey Shane, it's uh, Ben Briner. It seems like that that off that outside zone has kind of evolved into maybe sort of the base of your running game and kind of stabilized that a little bit. Was that kind of by design, or was that sort of the evolution of a season? What's kind of working? How the lines kind of block? What the lines kind of blocking well? Yeah, I'd say it's a little bit of both. I mean, we've been doing that since the springtime. I mean, we're primarily a inside zone, outside zone team. Um, you know, it fits our backs well. We're not we're not the biggest you know offensive line in the in the league. That's for sure. And you know but we're fairly athletic, so, you know, outside zone, you're able to kind of get people moving and running backs are able to find creases and seams in there. And uh, and then, like I said yesterday, Ben, we were able to do a little bit more, you know, gap scheme stuff and run the counter uh, because of uh, – which we've done in the past. I mean, that's something new. We just hadn't really done it this year. Mm-hmm. We did it a lot last year, obviously, with Javon Gwynn and those guys. Javon was awesome at it. Um and uh, Trey gave us the ability to do that more yesterday. So, you know, we felt like one thing coming out of the bye week is we needed to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more not complex, but uh, have a little bit more volume in our run game and, and make us tougher to tougher to defend because of it. Hey, Shane, it's Hill again. If, uh, if you guys need to look to another running back, if Mario needs to miss any time, how, how close do you guys feel like, DJ Braswell is to, to being able to step in and carry carry a load. He's close, yeah. He's another one that has practiced well and and uh, continues to get better. He's got a you know a good competitive spirit to him and and uh, and uh, he's doing a good job in practice. Certainly, you know those other guys are older and and uh, are a little bit ahead of him right now. But I think he's very close. And if for some reason Mario wasn't able to go, uh, you know I'd have a lot of confidence and we'd certainly want to, you know, get him going certainly to give us a third guy if Mario wasn't able to play.